Polar bears live throughout the Arctic, where they make a living by hunting seals on the surface of the sea ice. But not all sea ice is equal. Some sea ice lies over biologically rich waters with lots of seals. Other sea ice lies over deep, unproductive waters. Some sea ice melts each summer, while other areas of the Arctic Ocean are covered with sea ice year-round. Because the polar bear's sea ice habitat literally melts as temperatures rise, human-caused global warming means polar bears have less and less sea ice to hunt on in the summer months. Studies show that some polar bear populations are already declining due to longer fasting periods. However, in other more northerly areas where there's more sea ice or in areas with lots of seals, polar bears may not be impacted yet. Ultimately, all polar bears will be affected as global warming continues. In 2010, Dr. Amstrup led a study showing that unless we greatly reduce carbon emissions, two-thirds of the world's polar bears could disappear by the end of the century. This was a monumental warning. But it left a new, big, unanswered question. Exactly when? When will polar bears begin to disappear in different parts of the Arctic? Now, through the efforts of a team of sea ice scientists and ecological modelers brought together by Dr. Amstrup, we finally have some more details to answer that question. In this new study, data from polar bears fasting on land was used to determine how many days polar bears can go without sea ice before reproduction and survival decline rapidly. These estimates were intersected with climate model projections of how many ice-free days polar bears will face in different places around the Arctic. To make these models, the amount of sea ice was derived from two greenhouse gas emissions scenarios. The first scenario models what will happen to polar bears if people take no action on climate change and continue to maximize use of fossil fuels with business as usual carbon emissions. In this scenario, the average end of century temperature is 3.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. This would mean that a few populations of polar bears may survive in the most northern parts of their current range, but most would collapse by the end of the century. That's only 80 years from now, a human lifetime. The second scenario models what will happen if people make moderate reductions to carbon emissions, with an average end of century temperature increase of 2.4 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. In this case, more polar bear populations may persist to the latter part of this century. Although this scenario is better in the short term, the long-term temperatures would still continue to rise beyond 2100, exceeding the warmest periods that have occurred during the polar bear's evolutionary history, and their long-term future would still not be assured. Ideally, we would follow a different scenario, one not modeled here, where people come together and take swift, bold action as a global community to meet the goals set during the Paris Agreement and keep global temperature rise below two degrees. This is still an option. There is still time to act. Doing so could preserve polar bears over much of their current range indefinitely. Polar bears show us the consequences that a warming world brings, both for the Arctic and for the rest of the planet. The future of polar bears is interconnected with our own. We can choose to rapidly decrease our reliance on fossil fuels and make a swift transition to renewable energy. Doing so would not only protect polar bears, but ecosystems and species around the world, including us.